Hello, today we're going to be going over to Salem Platinum 2024. It's a 22 ERASX, and we are going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. On the tongue jack, you got two switches here. Your top one is going to be a light switch, so if you had to hook up at night, you're able to see. Then the other one here, so that you're able to raise and lower the camper. This is how we level the camper from front to back. This is also how we get on and off the tow vehicle. I do always like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're loaded from side to side first. We like to recommend using a carpenter's level right inside the doorway, but they do make little stick on levels you can put on the front and on the side of your coach uh, to figure out your levelness as well. But basically you might have to flip blocks down on one side or the other. Let's use that tow vehicle to roll onto those blocks, okay? Once we are level from side to side, then that's when we would unhook from the tow vehicle, our seven way, our chains, and then unhook and then pull the vehicle forward and level front to back with this guy. They do also provide an area here with a manual crank. So if for something happened to the motor, you still have a way to operate the tongue jack. And that is located right inside our front storage compartment. Next, we're gonna have two 20 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what I use to test the propane system with. And then this guy here is just a regular regulator. Uh, there is no choosing what tank you want. Uh, so with this style, I do like to recommend one tank at a time. If you have these both on, it basically pulls from them at the same time, and then they'll both end up being empty on you, and we just don't want that. Then we got a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. Down here is going to be where your battery disconnect is located. So basically, anytime you are storing the camper, you're going to basically just turn this guy like so, pull the key, it disconnects the, camp, the battery from the camper, so if anything was left on, it would not potentially drain the battery on you, okay? All right, as we come around to the side, you got your one pass-through storage compartment here. I'm not gonna open it because we got our condensation water dripping from the air conditioner. These guys here, okay, I lied. I gotta open this. <laughs> Just to grab our tool here. Normally it's actually mounted and stored on the other side, but I was doing our jacks here and I left it on this side. Basically with these guys, these guys are really nice and simple. Uh, so with your stabilizer jacks, and these guys are located on each corner of the camper, but basically you just take a little bit of that pressure off. You're gonna grab this guy down here and then you're gonna lift. Basically, just like so. And then this guy should go right on in. Nice, super and easy. Love these new style stabilizers they came out with. And then this guy here just locks onto here. So if it was to slowly start working itself out going down the road, this is gonna catch it from going all the way down. So then next we're gonna have where we would do our sewer dumping. As you see, I got our clear elbow on because I like to try to direct the water so it doesn't have a big water radius splash zone. But basically, when you go to dump, you're always gonna start with your black tank first. You're gonna make sure your sewer hose is hooked up. This guy's in the ground. You're gonna pull this handle to start dumping. When we get around to the back, I'll show you guys where your uh, black tank flush is to uh, basically clean the black tank. And it's basically a sprayer inside the black tank. It sprays around and gets that nastiness out. But we're gonna talk a little more about that once we get over there to that area. Once you have done your black, you're gonna close it. And then you're going to open your gray. You got one right here. This one's going to be for the bathroom sink and shower. And then this other one back here is just your kitchen sink. All right, let's come around our slide. Uh, hey, you guys have what they call a through frame ram style slide. So if these guys ever start making noises on you, basically down here, you're just going to buy some lubricant and you're going to lubricate these gears down here basically that sprocket and there's gears underneath that square shaft you have the option for an aftermarket ladder uh, it's telescope style so it just ratchets it up it's got two hooks that'll hook into that so you guys can get on your roof and inspect the roof okay you basically they say you want to try to do this every 90 to 120 days but you're basically going up there to check the sealant to make sure if you're pulling it down the road no air bubbles have occurred from uh, the sealant softening from the sun hitting it or if this guy stays stationary, over time that sealant will start to dry out and start cracking. When that happens, that's when you want to try to clean that sealant and then put new lap sealant over it. You can usually do this for about two to three times. Then it is recommended you want to try to completely repeal that and put down fresh sealant, okay? Next, we got our vent for the stove. 
this guy here does have to be open for that fan to be properly working. When you go to close it, I normally just put my finger right in the middle, flex the edges, and it helps feed it easily right into that groove. Furnace area here, you try not to block these guys so it can properly breathe, but I do like to recommend getting bud dauber screens. These guys are roughly $15 or less, depending on where you get them from. Uh, but that guy will actually save you quite a bit of money. If for some reason, you know, some reason the mud dauber nest got in here or a wasp nest, they built a nest, it creates issue with the furnace. Well, the furnace would have to get pulled, so you'd have to have it serviced. Most shop labor rates are at least at 140 and above, okay? So $15 compared to 140 something an hour. Let's just be smart thinking. Next, we got our 50 amp power cord. It does come with the coach. It is also pre-wired for a observational backup camera. And then right here is where your, your water station kind of area. You got your cable and satellite hookups. Basically, if you're using a campground cable, you do have to turn off the TV antenna booster, and I will show you that once we step inside. And then satellite just hooks up to the dome. And over here is going to be where you got your city water hookup. So with this guy, it is always recommended you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter, then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook up to this guy, you're going to be ready to use the water system right away. Hot and cold. We're going to talk about that in a minute because you guys got the nice on-demand water heater. On the other side here is where that black tank flush is. As you see, there is a caution sticker here that tells you you want to make sure that handle is open before you get water going through this guy. Okay? The reason for that is if your tank is full already and you go to hook up and turn your water on to start doing a flush, if that tank's already full, water's only coming out of two places, either the toilet or the vent stack on the roof. Both situations is nasty and bad, okay? But for this guy, I do always like to recommend that you do use a pressure regulator on this as well. The reason for that is because on the back side of this is a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve, okay? From there, go get yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. Blue and white's our drinking water, black is our waste. Simple. From there, you make sure your valve's on, turn on your water, start doing your flush. When you see that water start coming out of clear from, clear from your elbow, go ahead and shut that off. Shut off the water and hook it from the spigot first. The reason for that is because on the back side of this, there's a water line to that check valve, but we don't know how long that is. Sometimes it's this long, sometimes it's this long, if not even longer, okay? One thing to note is that water never touched your tank. The only reason why that water is coming back out is because there was no pressure to push it through that check valve, okay? guy here is going to be your overflow for your sink and this guy here is going to be your on-demand water heater there's really only one thing you have to do inside this guy and that's basically mess with this switch right here other than that usually there isn't anything else you'd really mess with in this guy when you go to winterize your coach these guys do get winterized as well okay down here in this bottom corner is where your low point drains are going to be uh, they are not as easy to see. They had most of it kind of covered with insulation or spray foam. Uh, but basically, you got your red right here for hot water, and then right next to that's going to be the blue for your blue or for cold water. Basically, these are the lowest points of the water lines inside the coach. So whenever you're done camping, I always like to open those up, open up a faucet. As you go home, that's going to push air through those lines and push any excess water out, so that way it won't become stagnant or bad. Uh, when that happens, then you got to usually sanitize uh, the camper and you'll be doing that through the fresh water tank by adding bleach to that fresh water tank. <clears throat> you'll also use these guys when you go to winterize your coach. And we'll talk a little more inside about winterizing. Your bumper is able to hold the sewer hose. It does not come with the coach. Another aftermarket item they like to get you with. One thing is though that that, that clear elbow that comes with your sewer hose does not fit in here. What I always like to recommend is get yourself a clear ice cream container. We'll have a good time or a depressing time eating that ice cream. It's entirely up to you. But you save that plastic container when you're done and you're able to store that sewer and inside that hose so it doesn't move it around getting stuff all nasty. I've also seen people where they've actually screwed it to the floor in their storage compartment so that container ain't sliding around all over the place. We will go over our awning 
once we have uh, stepped inside, we'll talk a little bit about that. For right now, we're going to go ahead and talk. I'm going to bring these guys up, and we're going to talk about our steps here in just a second. Right now, we're going to talk about our tires. So with these guys, you always want to make sure that the lug nuts are torqued to 100 foot-pounds. And it is recommended you check these at 50, 100, and 200 miles. What I always like to say and tell the customer is that a lot of times, first place we're stopping once we leave the campground is the gas station to refuel. While you're refueling, you can also check these lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. You also want to make sure you keep these guys topped off to their max PSI level. These guys here are 65 PSI. You got an outside speakers on, so you can hear these guys being operational. This guy here is where your fresh water tank is located. It is gravity fed. Basically, you just stick the hose in and let it start filling. Please read the monitor panel inside so when the tank says full, you want to shut that water off. Overfilling it and waiting for water to shoot out at you over time can cause damage to both the outside and the inside where this is connected. The drain for him is going to be located down below, right behind our tire right there, and you just pull that handle to dump. Nice thing is, this guy's about I got an inch and a half opening tubing for draining, so it's going to drain the water out really quickly. That's actually a very nice feature. You're able to bring a TV out and hook it up here. You got the 110 for that. And then on the other side was our storage, the other side of our storage compartment. So right here is our straps that would actually hold the manual cranks. This one here is going to be for your stabilizers. They leave this guy open here, so for some reason, um, the bed lift stops working. First thing I'm going to tell you to check is that fuse area right there to make sure that fuse has not been blown. Oh, and then this guy here is what they call a dry erase surface. Uh, the kids can play on it. Uh, you can also, what you do is as, if this guy stays stationary at a campsite or a camping lot, uh, what you can do is when you start to run out of stuff, you just write it on here and then take a picture of it with your phone before you leave, then you know what you guys need to pick up for the next time you go camping. All right, let's come back over here to our entry door. One thing you do have to notice, this door does have to be all the way open when you go to bring these steps out. These guys up top here are going to be so you're able to adjust your feet. A lot of people will leave them all the way down until they bring it out the guy or bring out your steps. Right here is going to unlock it and then it just pulls right out and sets down. The reason why you were adjusting these feet is because basically we're trying to make sure this here is going to be flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of an elevation on these steps will cause issues and damage to both the screen door and the entry door if you are not careful. we step inside right to our left is always going to be your fire extinguisher we got our other set of keys there that I left now I left our other set on the ladder so basically your purple key is going to be your entry door key for the door handle you will turn the key to the right and it locks just the door handle for the deadbolt you turn the key to the left you are unable to pull the key out until you turn the key back straight up and down if you turn the key to the right and you're able to pull that key out that shows you you did not lock your deadbolt. And then your other key is going to be for your storage compartments. All right, so right up here is going to be our solar controller. Basically, this just monitors the battery. Once the battery gets below a certain level, it'll allow the surge of the panels to come through to charge the battery. Uh, right now, it's reading our full, basically our full charge because we are plugged in, so it is reading that, that charge as well. Then down here is going to be our control panel. You got your battery, can't see, our battery, fresh tank, oh, okay, I got something that came loose on the back side of that. Basically your fresh tank tells you your fresh tank status, your black tank, gray one, and your kitchen sink. This guy here is going to be for the water pump, you're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. And then this guy here is going to be for your awning lights, and then this one here is for the scented lights above the slide. Then we got our slide room to bring it in and out. And then this guy here, is that going the right way? Okay. To bring our awning out. I don't know how far we'll be able to bring this guy out because we do have another unit close to us. 
I'm going to try to bring it out just enough so I can guys show you guys what, what you're able to do with your awning. All right. One thing to always note with your awning is that if there's, basically if this camper is going to be unoccupied or un being unattended to, bring the awning in. The reason for that is you never know when a pop-up storm or a strong gust of winds can come along, but either or can cause damage to both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. Then you got these guys right here basically right on the side. What you do is you pull these guys down, and what it does is it creates a pitch for your awning. This is meant to be as a shade protecting. All right. And then next we're gonna have our thermostat. I'll go ahead and cycle through here to the beginning. So when you first push the button, it's gonna light up the display, just like so. But then you got fan low and fan high. <clears throat> Cool high and cool low. And these two settings here, the air conditioner will just continuously run and will not shut off. You're gonna go to cool low auto and cool high auto. This is where that thermos, that's basically where the air conditioner will come on and off to desired set temperature you guys have it set to. Right now I got it at 33 degrees. That's how they usually come in standard. Let's turn that guy up to about 65 because I'm a larger guy and I perspirate quite a bit. <laughs> so then our other switch here is going to be for the living room area lights. We turn them on and turn them off. But if you press and hold, you're able to dim them down. So if you're trying to have a nice romantic evening, mm -hmm. turn on your ambiance lights, dim the lights, you got a fireplace. You can get the nice whole mood setting going. Put down a bare rug if you wanted to. Do the whole kits and caboodles. Go ahead and turn these lights back up here a little bit. All right. So next we're going to have our entertainment center area here. Uh, I got a TV that the customer uh, purchased. I do still have to put on this guy. This guy here is going to be your remote for the radio. And as we heard our outside speakers, that is going to be on speaker zone two. And it tells you that right through the screening area here. Speaker zone one is going to be these two speakers right here can have just one on, you can have them both on. It's entirely up to you. I do always recommend though, if you decide that you end up hooking a ray, uh, DVD player and all that, sync through here. Um, if you guys gonna watch a movie, turn off speakers on too. That way the people outside ain't hearing that movie with you. Then our other remote here is gonna be for the fireplace. So you got your power switch, you're able to have either, it'll say double zero, which would be just your ambiance. So you just have the flames and the colored rocks. Uh, then you got low and high, and that's just the fan speed, and it just continues pumping out that heat. You got a timer setting from 30 minutes to nine hours. This one here, you're able to change the color of the rocks. And then this one here, you're able to change the color of the flame. All right, so with this guy, got a lock up top and a lock down here at the bottom that you would lock as well but then this guy actually opens up to where you have storage back behind here this is where our TV antenna hookup is you got a 110 and prep for Wi-Fi but this right here is what I was telling you about that if you guys have, are using campground cable you have to push this button to turn off that booster so that way that cable signal feed can come through when this booster is on the antenna is considered a primary signal and you got to cut that signal off. All right, then down here at the bottom, this is where basically you would come to winterize your coach. There are two panels that's, that's, that goes over this to cover, and I got those on our counter. But basically, you're going to have your hose right here that will go into your jugs and antifreeze. Then you're going to turn this knob right here, just like so. Turn on the water pump, and then from there you're going to winterize your coach. As long as you can get all of the water out of their coach, since you got an on-demand water heater, you should be able to get by winterizing this guy with uh, usually between probably three and a three and a half gallons of antifreeze. This is actually one of the simpler winterizations. You ain't got extra bowels because you got the nice on-demand water heater. Uh, this guy here is a motion sensor light. So that's what this guy, this little eyelet is here. But on the back side, your switch is, you got a one hash mark will continuously stay on. And the two hash mark is the motion sensor setting. 
So basically when it senses motion, it'll automatically pop on for you. We're going to leave this open for just a second as we kind of come in here towards the bathroom. I'm going to have you go ahead and sneak this way for me. Certainly. Thank you, camera lady. You're very so welcome. So the reason why I had her go ahead and pivot around for us is because this model is designed to where you got a magnet up here. You close this. And this is the TV for the bedroom. Ooh, that okay. is cool. One thing you do have to note, though, is the bigger the TV, they say you can put a 40-inch on here. The problem is that you're going to end up losing a couple of the couple of you know your couple inches here on the side just because of our wall here. So you're not going to be able to see that. All right. All right. Then we got our pocket doors here. These guys just basically on snap and then come together. Hello again. Hello again. That's very dramatic. Ta-da! <laughs> so next we're going to have the toilet. So with your toilet, you always do want to make sure there's some kind of liquid in the bottom of this. So that way your, uh, that seal doesn't get dry rotten or brittle. Because when that happens, the smell can start to come through and it won't hold the water. I do always like to recommend to the cleaner, if you take non-stick cook spray, spray that bowl of the toilet. It helps everything go down easier, makes it easier clean for the cleaner. When you're going to add water so you can do your business, there's a pedestal right down here. You just lightly press on this pedestal and you will add water. All the way down it's going to flush. You also want to make sure that you are using chemicals in the tank. So basically when you're first getting ready to start using the camper or the bathroom, you're going to have to put a chemical in there. You either got liquid or the pouches. With the liquid, generally two ounces will treat a 40 gallon tank. So normally what I'll do is I'll hold that down. And I'll go one, two. That's it. If you're using the pouch, I like to recommend put water in here, probably at least about right here in the bowl, and then put that pouch in. Watch that and make sure that pouch dissolves before you flush that fluid down, or that liquid or the rest of that down. I have seen where some of them pouches have not dissolved in the tank and they're not doing their job. Okay. Then we got our sink here. We got the medicine cabinet that opens up. There is a string here on the back side that actually secures right here to get to it. But they did not give you a whole lot of room with this. So you generally got to have your hand kind of down here and then work yourself around to be able to lock that into place. I mean, it keeps it closed during travel. Then we got our GFCI right here. So if there's outlets through the coach that are not working, come and make sure that this guy has not been tripped. I'm going to backtrack for two seconds. You stay right there, camera lady. Okay. All right, so. Now, actually, I'm going to have you pivot over here. All right. <laughs> All right, so basically what I did is I just went ahead and turned on our water pump because I do still have a little bit of water in the system. But that is basically so I can show you your on-demand water heater. So you got your power switch here to turn it on and turn it off. So it's saying that water in there right now is about 84 degrees. So that switch outside, if that switch is in the off position, this control panel right here has no power whatsoever. So that switch has to be on when you go to use this panel. The, basically the reason for that switch is so that you're able to winterize the coach. You turn that switch off so it isn't trying to heat that antifreeze as it's flowing through there. Then from there, basically you got your temperature settings. As high as it goes is 122 degrees. Then we start turning this guy on. It's gonna show, hey, I'm calling for water. I'm turning on my fan. And now my flame icon, icon is going to come on. And as you see, our water is already starting to get hot. I do not remember if I left the tanks on or not. So we will see if that actually will get all the way up to temp. Now, you will take a few minutes before you would actually feel it here because it's further back. So right, right now, it's getting ready to get close to about the 122. But I'm able to easily keep my hand under here so that water hasn't. Now it's starting to get hot. <laughs> and... You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that steam or not coming off of that. Once you turn it off, what it does is shows that, hey, I stopped calling for the water. It shuts off that flame, but that fan continues to run to cool it down before it shuts down. Then we got our light switch here. Manual vent up top. Crank handle, you twist to open. And then your light switches or your switches right there. 
Alright, so then here in the bedroom, each side has its own little closet area that has a 110 and USB hookup. You, and a cubby compartment that is basically designed so if you're using a CPAP machine, the machine is actually able to store inside that little cubby space there. And then you got your plug to plug it in. You've also got storage up above. And as you see that nice little sticker there, it tells you you got a versatile bed lounge. So basically, right over here, and it's even got another caution sticker there. But this is going to be for our bed left. Basically, to push it up. And to bring it down. Very nice and fancy. All right. Shut this. On this side over here, these guys here are nice cloth style. And they just Velcro together. But over here, they basically have your fire exit window. So if there was an emergency, you weren't able to make it to the door, you just pop this guy, push it open, slide your screen back, you're able to get out. Sorry, I like all the focus on me. And then we got our other pocket doors here for the bedroom as well. And storage under the bed. And there is storage on, I did, I'm sorry. There is storage under the bed and you are able to access the storage compartment as well. I just really like those totes, oh, yeah. so. You also got your little laundry basket over here in the corner. I got my camera lady keeping me in line. I just really like the I start totes. cruising <laughs> a little fast and then I forget about things. All right, so then we got our shower here. We'll talk about this when we were first in the bathroom. But basically, you got your button here. What this does is it reduces the flow of water so you can try to get the most out of your hot water. The reason for that, though, is that these are usually designed for, like, the actual uh, propane-style water heaters because most of those guys are using only six gallons. The average American uses almost 38 gallons of just hot water when they take a shower. So you're just generally outmatched out of the gate. But that reducer is tries to help you to get the most out of your hot water. And then you got this guy here. That will lock into place. Giving me fits again. Then we got our recliner area here. Basically, these guys here, so you're able to recline and it does fold out to a pretty decent size, or where you can just basically kick this guy back and you're just ready to kick your feet up and watch some good tunes. Good night. Good night. Believe me, I've thought about a couple nap times on this guy. Uh, but then you got your other window here. Uh, your Most of your windows are all going to be the same style locks on here. And then your blinds here. Pull them down and lock them in. Then we've got our pantry area here. Another motion sensor light, as you've seen. So then we're going to have our 12-volt fridge. All right, so this guy operates off of the battery. Got your freezer here, mm, nice and good and frozen. And then down below for our fridge is going to be where you would have your knob to be able to set your temperature. They even have an off-grid mode. So if you guys are kind of boondock camping, you can turn it to these here where it keeps the fridge just underneath that dangers, that food danger zone. Um, and But it's not pulling as much power. Okay, that way in that setting, at least the solar panels can somewhat be able to keep up. When this guy's on a full draw, the panels will struggle to charge those batteries if you're boondock camping. Please be mindful of that. Then we got the microwave up here. Microwave is pretty self-explanatory. I do like to say set the time on this guy. You guys go out, you come back, you see the time is not set. That tells you there was a power failure at the campsite. We want to look and see if that was from the campsite itself or from the electric company. Uh, I have seen some of the larger campsites where uh, there's a lot of campers going on. You are going to experience power surges. So this is where I would like to usually try to make a recommendation that uh, it does not hurt to get a uh, surge protector for the uh, camper. They make them for where they would plug into a 50 amp. I believe that's what our camper was. Uh, so please be mindful of that. Then we got our hood range where the one hash mark is just the light. Two hash mark is going to be the light and the fan. Then we got our stove. This is not a glass stove top, so this does have to be flipped up when you go to use it. 
But then basically you're just going to turn this guy to that flame icon and turn it on. Nice thing is this guy lights up red to tell you when that knob is in the on position. You do have a little guy over here also where it lights up just these. That one hash mark, the two hash mark is going to be these, but also the oven. Nice thing is, is the oven will also spark ignite from this guy here. Basically you just turn it to that flame icon, but you got to press and hold it in and then do this till it spark ignites. A lot of times if you angle this just right, you can usually try to catch that spark um, off the glass and you can see when that flame is lit. Once it is lit, keep, it, keep this pushed in for seven to 10 seconds before setting the temperature. Then we got storage up above. This guy right here is a sticker, basically tells you to scan this sticker and it takes you straight to Salem. Put in your information about the camper and it downloads a, a PDF file for you. I think they really wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it because they have a secondary sticker right here as well. Uh, this one is being able to download an app. Uh, but then we got our sink, our little dish drainer, dish drainer, counter, whatever you want to call that thing. It's cool. It, it can, be, up, you can, it can be used for quite a quite a few different things. Uh, but then you got your storage down here as well. I just put this back in my way again. You got your two nice seats here. These guys actually do get strapped in during travel. But inside this compartment, this drawer here, you got your shelves. Then down below here is where our fuse control panel box is located. So basically, anything that operates off sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work, that is going to be on your breakers, and they have everything here labeled for you. Everything that runs off the battery is going to be on your fuses. And once again, it's all labeled for you right here. Then also down here is going to be where our LP slash carbon monoxide detector is located. Basically, this guy is recommended. This is to be tested every 9 to 14 days. To do the test, you just simply push this right here, and we're going to perform our test. back to green all right if this guy is to ever go off you do want to take emergency precautions okay first person out of the coach is turning off the propane canisters the second person out is trying to get anything that breathes out of the coach but you're also trying to open a couple of windows we're not trying to turn on exhaust fans vent fans we're not trying to create any kind of electrical spark okay then we're going to get 50 feet away for 15 minutes after a 15 minute time frame, one person is going to come back in this coach. The first place I always like to tell you to check is the stove. A lot of times these knobs will get pressed and turned, but the nice thing is, is this guy's got that indicator to let you know when these knobs have been turned on. Um, if it is not the stove, you turn it back on, it seems like it's going off again. Well, there's only two places where propane is actually connected inside of the coach, and that is going to be the stove and the furnace underneath it. So if it's not the stove, there's a possibility there's a leak at the furnace. You want to bring that in and have it serviced and looked at, okay? Propane is a serious matter and is not to be taken lightly. Uh, but with that being said, there are other things that can cause that guy to go off, such as hairspray, cleaning chemicals, and animal gases, okay? So just be mindful of what's actually going on inside the coach. And then you guys got your really nice long countertop here got the customer's TV amount. I got to still put, in, put on and install. All right. And then this guy here is going to be your owner's manual bag. Basically, this has all the manuals for the appliances inside the coach. But it does have this right here, which I think is the most important slip inside this bag. Basically, this is an appliance info sheet. It basically has a serial number and the model number for every appliance on the coach. And there's two sides. There's a front and a back. Turn that over so she can get it view of that as well but if something was to happen to an appliance inside the coach they may ask you what the model number and serial number is for that appliance over the phone nice thing is, is with this paper you guys got a nice quick reference guide for that now there is one thing I did not mention and that's basically going to be your air conditioner in the back bedroom that is basically manually controlled 
the, they're just basically right on the air conditioning unit, really self-explanatory. Um, other than that, from there, we have basically made our way around the coach. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us, and we do our best to answer those for you over the phone. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.